Next guest on the program, Nationals MP Keith Pitt. Thanks very much for your time. Tom, great to be with you. Great to be with you, viewers. So Bob Brown there saying, let's make sure, above all else, that the proper procedures are, f are followed, the black-throated finch needs to be protected, and the water plan as well. We did hear, uh, have this information out from the CSIRO, that the devil was in the detail. They didn't have the detail. Should all of that be put on the table, made sure everything's ascertained before the, the, uh, the first shovel is dug into dirt here? Uh, Tom, I, I think enough's enough. Uh, I mean, how much more time does the Queensland Labor government need? I, I read in the media today that they've had those environmental processes in terms of the applications for two years. Uh, now, I don't know too many businesses who can wait two years before they kick off. This has taken a very long time, uh, and, and I think that anyone, any of your listeners with any common sense out there, know that this has just become a political football for the Queensland Labor government. And Premier Palaszczuk is just, you know, backflipping her way to try and get some success. But I'll agree with Bob Brown on one thing. There's been a thumbs down, and that was on the weekend. Uh, the Australian people have given the thumbs down very clearly to Labor's proposition. Uh, they have agreed with what we've put forward as policies, and I think that is just a victory for common sense. On the aspect of this, though, you mentioned the state government and political football. What about, as I said, the CSIRO, the thing that happened here at federal level? They said, again, this was a quote, devil's in the detail on the water plan. We don't know the detail. Do we need to know that before this project starts, given the importance to farmers of the groundwater plan? Yeah, but, Tom, let's, let's be very serious about this. I mean, how, how long does it take to get an approval? There, there well, is a, we'll, we'll get to, you, we'll get to yeah. your question in, in a moment. But, I mean, in terms of sovereign risk for our nation, I mean, how many people out there that would want to invest in Australia would wait you know, up to eight years to get I understand that, a, and there's a clear a go flow it. from the state government on that. No doubt about we'll it. We'll accept that. Yep. But what about having all the detail there on this environmental plan, including at a federal level. But I've seen Melissa's statement, uh, and, and she signed it off uh, from what about my memory. the CSIRO and their comments? Yeah, but, I mean, this is why you have independent people doing the assessment. But let's be very, very clear. I mean, uh, for me, at a personal level, I absolutely support opening the Galilee Basin. We have some of the strictest environmental conditions in the world, and they need to meet all of those conditions, and yeah, that, is what, that, include, but that is what they are doing. And that has included the detail, though, from the CSIRO. That's, again, that question. Yeah, but I mean, we need that... to have all of that detail before the project starts. But those are decisions for the minister, right? I don't have that in front of me. Uh, I'm not but the you responsible would have read minister. The CSIRO comments, didn't you? I've certainly seen some of the comments, but I've also seen comments from others about let's just get on with this damn thing. So the, I, I, the Tom, said, I, let's get on with it. Overrule what the CSIRO. But was Tom, let's let's be very very clear. I think this has been incredibly frustrating. I am very surprised that Adani are still here after the amount of money they've invested and time uh, and all of the effort to try and clear every hurdle. Uh, we want jobs in central Queensland. The message from the election is very clear. That we, we want a common sense, balanced approach, which is what we are taking. Uh, we took to the election as being cleared by the Australian people and they've given us a resounding thumbs up. There is no doubt we need to meet all of the environment conditions that are required. Uh, but how long does that take? I mean, we're talking about a bird now. Uh, and my understanding is they've got to go and do a bird count. I mean, some of these things just get completely What's out of hand. What's wrong with doing a bird count? How else would you do it? Yeah, but I mean... You want to know the... But, Tom, I mean, this is some of the challenges around uh, environmental legislation in this country. So, once again, let me be very, very clear. I think the project should go forward if it meets the environmental conditions. It should not have continued hurdles okay, put in front of it. OK, but you mentioned... You said, well, we're talking about a bird here. Are you saying it's been so long and it's worth jobs and money, let's... If, if there's a bit of a concern about the black-throated finch... Don't worry about it. Yeah, but, I mean, that's not the issue. You always have to make... No, but that's what I'm asking. You yeah, said... But, well, you, you, well, OK. You indicate, well, let's not worry about the bird. Uh, that, well, that's not what I've said, but uh, let, let, let me be very, very clear. You need to have a practical, common-sense, balanced approach to development in this country. Uh, if we think that we cannot build uh, anywhere and have some type of effect, it is about managing what that environmental effect is, because, quite simply, otherwise, there is no development. Uh, and there are no jobs, uh, and we certainly don't proceed <coughs> with mining anywhere. I mean, look at the sugar industry, Tom. You would not develop the sugar industry in Australia under our current environmental conditions. It simply wouldn't be there. So w we need to balance off the environment with our need to build why, why in our economy. What would happen now? Oh, well, there's a whole pile of things which I think which would get in the way. I mean, th that industry was a greenfield site where they've had to go and uh, clear, you know, existing... Uh, uh, vegetation, they've had to go and manage uh, what was there in place, uh, and now we have, you know, people who are coming back and saying, well, now, even if you don't affect the Great Barrier Reef, you have to meet All the right. Great Barrier Reef conditions. What about taxpayer money for Adani? Should there be any on the table? Should that be revisited? Well, look, I, I, I've always been a supporter of the Commonwealth and other levels of government building critical public infrastructure. Uh, it, I don't see it any different to building a road, to building a bridge, 
uh, to building You're talking uh, about ports. the railway to take so, coal yeah, correct. from the mine to the port. Yeah, so the, so the, the, state, the last where this sits, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, is that the state government blocked the attempt of the Northern Australia Infrastructure Fund to fund this. You want to push for that again, do you? Uh, well, look, I just think it's something that's worth exploring, but I think it's too late. I, I think Adani has moved on to what it, the option they're going to take. I think there was an opportunity for all levels of government to invest in something which would uh, open up that development uh, right across the board. Keep in mind there's more than 40 uh, licence holders in the Galilee Basin. It's not just one. Uh, we seem to get hung up on this you know, one well, because company. it's the first one that would actually start, obviously. So, Well, there's two or three in, the, in combination, is my understanding. Uh, but the, the reality is, if we don't build critical infrastructure, the, the company doesn't develop. Now, this is no different, in my view, to building the East West Link. Uh, it's no different to upgrading the Bruce Highway for critical infrastructure because you know, there's more traffic. Uh, there's certainly a lot more uh, logistical load. But the difference is, product. in the East West Link, you've got people wanting to get somewhere within a city. Here, you've got a company wanting to make money by digging something up in Australia. That's, there's a difference there, surely. Yeah, but, Tom, if you go and look at all of those proposals around the country, uh, over a long period of time, it has been governments that build that critical infrastructure, whether it was gas, whether it was rail, whether it was ports. Uh, it had always been government. So I think we need to ensure we get the balance right. Uh, that is what we took to the election very right. successfully. Uh, and I think that has been, once again, a victory for common sense. Um, on energy, uh, are you s thinking about another push now in the wake of this election result for a subsidised coal-fired power plant, or are you still agnostic? Uh, I've always been agnostic. Uh, there are places where uh, renewable hybrid packages work, uh, particularly if it's diesel generation, for example. But we need to make common sense decisions that keep the price down and the reliability up. All right. Still agnostic. Uh, and on a lot of talk about Scott Morrison's authority, what about Michael McCormack? Is he now short of leading the National Party until the next election? Oh, Tom, I've been asked this probably a hundred times in the last five weeks, and my answer's yeah, always been the, the same. Election. Oh, there'll be no change. Has he got increased authority? Oh, there'll be no change. Are you hopeful of a ministry spot? Oh, look, I think everyone in this building looks for more responsibility. I, I, I'm no different. Uh, but I certainly look forward to us getting on with our agenda, which I think was a very balanced approach, particularly okay. on climate change. And Barnaby Joyce not in the Cabinet, right decision? Uh, well, that's a decision for the, for the leadership. But if that's the case, that's what we're hearing, is that the right decision? Yeah, but once again, I mean, that's, that's entirely up to the Prime Minister. But you can have your Prime Minister. On it. Yeah, but it doesn't matter what my view is. Uh, I, I care. <laughs> well, that's, our viewers but care. that's a matter for you, Tom. Well, our viewers, I'm sure, would like to know. Do you think it's the right thing for the party to be a bit more forward-focusing, that Barnaby Joyce is in the past now in terms Look, of leadership? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to make comments on my individual colleagues, but I think this has been a watershed moment for politics in this country. We certainly had a lot of very high-profile MPs move on to other things. Okay. And I think there's an opportunity for us now to build, particularly for another two terms.